Amen. Wow. Let's praise the name. Wow. Praise God. <laughs> praise the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. The kids are waiting for the song. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. I took that out today, and I didn't realize that's the cue in the kid's mind to come forward. I invite the kids to come forward. Come on up, everybody. And I invite you. Hey, guys, let's sit in the first pew today, okay? Sit right over here. Instead of up here, sit on the first pew. Because we, we have an important job to do in a, in a minute here. All right? But first of all, hey, did, um, most of you, come on in. Come on, Sam. Okay, first of all, did any of you have to go to school on Friday, or did you have a day off? Yeah. I want to have a day off. Just thought, well, let's give you Friday off. Or was there a reason for it? Veterans Day, and it was also my brother's birthday. <laughs> Your brother's birthday? <laughs> but Veterans Day, what, what's a veteran? That's right, your, your sister's birthday just happened. Anybody know what a, a veteran is? A veteran is somebody who served our country. Very good, Weston. So I want you to, to look around and let's, if you were, if you're a veteran here today, would you raise your hand and let us see who you are? All right. Ready? served us so that we can live in this awesome free country. And we praise God for all of our, our veterans. Now, the important job that we have to do for today is all of these, right? What are, what are these? Presents. Presents for kids all around the world. For kids all around the world. And kids that are poor. Well, they don't have uh, the things that, that we have, probably, in most cases. But they will also get what is in this box, then they'll get, um, they'll put something in there that tells them about Jesus. And, and it'll be in their own language. So the, this box here, it's possible that this box could go somewhere in Africa. And they will put a thing in there in, in the African language, whatever language it happened to be, that they could understand. Or maybe somewhere in Mexico. Or maybe somewhere in um, Afghanistan. You never know where these boxes will end up. So, Australia. It could be Australia. <laughs> right. right. They could go anywhere. So I want you guys to come up here, and when I say so in a second, and what we're going to do is we're going to put our hands on these boxes, and we're going to pray for them. And then later on this week, I'll take them to a church um, over in uh, New Cumberland, West Virginia, where they will collect them, and they'll take them to North Carolina, and from North Carolina, they'll go all over the world. All right? So you guys want to come up and put your hands on these. And let's, let's pray together. I'll say the words, and you guys say them. Come on up, Sam. Right here, buddy. Right there. I'll say the words and you, you say them after. Dear Lord, thank you so much for these shoe boxes. We pray that the boys and girls who receive these will hear about you and come to know you as their Lord and Savior. And follow you all their lives. Thank you for all the people that have given me thoughts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wait, these are shoe boxes? They're shoe boxes. <laughs> all right, guys, you can go back to your seats. Jane has the candy there. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I'm probably not going to take them till Friday. So if anybody has a last minute box that they'd like to do, if you get in here in the church before um, Friday morning, that, that's probably the day I'm going to take them. So um, thank you. Thank you to those of you that uh, were part of this. Several years ago, um, I believe it was at the uh, Word FM pastor's lunch, I met this guy, Pastor Richard, and he told me that he represented the Ministry of Adult and Teen Challenge. And once you get to know Pastor Richard, you, know, you can't ever tell him no. <laughs> he doesn't take no for an answer. One of the most encouraging brothers in Christ I've, I've ever met. Um, every time he sees you, every time he texts, I love you, brother, we're praying for you. Just really appreciate you. And I've had the opportunity now over the past two summers to go out to their facility in Cheswick, uh, which they'll probably tell you a little bit about, um, and, and, and lead in chapel. And it's been a joy for me to be with you men at, at chapel during those times to share God's word. Uh, they have a very small little chapel where they sing praise just like we did. Um, and then someone comes in and, and shares God's word with them. So we have the opportunity to have them with us today. And uh, they are going to share some testimonies. I believe they have a skit. Um, and then uh, Pastor Richard is going to share a little bit of God's word uh, with us this morning. So let me pray for you guys, and then uh, I'll turn it over to you, if, if that's all right. Lord God, I, I thank you for the ministry of Adult and Teen Challenge. I, I've seen it in action. I know it works. And it works because of you. Yes. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who can take us out of darkness, the one that can take us out of addiction, the one who can take us out of sin, and move us into your marvelous light. And so I thank you for their ministry. I thank you for their willingness to come here today, uh, to come and share what you're doing in their lives um, with, uh, with us today. So thank you, Lord. I pray you would open our eyes, open our ears to hear uh, what you're saying to them and through them this morning. And thank you for the ministry of, of Adult and Teen Challenge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to invite you to come up and, and sort of turn things over to you. Hey, Raya, I'm giving him uh, David's mic. If you would make sure David's mic is on. Yeah, I think it's on. Yeah. All right. All right good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name's Corey. I'm with the Adult Teen Challenge. Um, I kind of represent the adult side of the Teen Challenge. Um, <laughs> but uh, we would just like to thank uh, Pastor Jefferson for inviting us out here. And we'd like to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, like he said, uh, we're going to have a couple testimonies for you guys. We got a little skit called How About to Pray, uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. And then, to finish it off, we have Pastor Rich. And I always tell people, Pastor Rich doesn't need to drink coffee to wake up. Coffee drinks Pastor Rich to wake up. <laughs> so, if you have seatbelts in the pews, you better put them on because you're going to need them. <laughs> So, I'll give you guys a little bit of a backing on Teen Challenge real quick. Uh, Teen Challenge was started in 1958. It was started in Brooklyn, New York by a man named David Wilkerson. And, keep it short, uh, David Wilkerson one day decided to get rid of his TV and take the time that he was spending watching TV to pray to God. And, because of one man praying to God, following God, being committed to God, he changed the world. So, anybody can change the world. And without him, me and my brothers, we might not be here today. We'd probably be dead somewhere. This program has saved my life. And not just this program, not just Pastor Rich, but Jesus Christ is the one that saved our lives. You know, Teen Challenge at Cheswick, PA, we don't um, talk about drugs. We don't talk about alcohol. We talk about the Lord. We talk about the sin of drugs and alcohol. We learn to live a new way of life. It's not just about not doing drugs. We don't have drug problems. We have a life problem that we use drugs to cope with. So through Jesus Christ, we've changed our lives. So Teen Challenge started in 1960 in Brooklyn, New York. Today, there is 1,500 Teen Challenges worldwide. So just to kind of give you guys an idea, there's only 400 in the United States. 
So there's 1,100 others around the world, and there's 40 of them just in the Ukraine alone. So Dave Wilkerson, like I said, one man doing his thing and being faithful to God, he just changed the whole world. And if you guys would like to learn a little bit more about the story, I'll leave a table in the back, and we've got the book, The Cross and the Switchblade, and it's a very inspiring book that will tell you all about Dave Wilkerson, his faith in God, and how he did what he did. And how we got to be where we're at today. So, without further ado, I'd like to bring my brother Jeff up and he can give you his first testimony. Good morning, church. Thanks for um, having me and listening to me. So my name is Jeff Phillips. I'm from um, Pittsburgh, not too far from here. And what brought me to um, Team Challenge after all these years was um, the fact that I suffer from two addictions, major anger issues and alcohol. And I've tried other rehabs, but they just tell you you're sick and then come back, and, uh, come back a couple months later. I tried... NA and AA, but they're repetitious, and all they tell you to do, do 12 steps, we'll be okay. And my addiction to alcohol started when I was in my mid-40s, about right when I was 46, 47. And throughout life, I've had problems with jobs. My career job as a cook, the place closed on me, I lost that job. And every job I've had since, except for two, closed up, or they lost their contracts, and I lost my job over that. That produced more anger issues in me besides the bad divorce and several other issues when I was younger. And I honestly thought, I'm going to be like this the rest of my life, until somebody suggested um, Team Challenge in Cheswick. And I really thought, like, Look how old I am. I want to go into a bunch of kids, <laughs> a bunch of teenagers. So I went and gave it a try, and I fell in love with a bunch of adult teenagers. But I learned the fact that um, it's not 12 steps, it's not NA or AA, the answer to my problem. My answer to my problem is Jesus Christ. The fact that I've been learning um, biblical theology and studying the Bible, and, um, reading Bible um, books on my own have been helping me a lot. And I'm hoping that I'll continue for another few months at Teen Challenge and possibly start spreading the word of Jesus around. And the Bible verse that um, I think fits me the most right now in my life is Romans 5 8. God demonstrated his own love toward us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you for listening to me. for his testimony. So, 
in school uh, was a trauma for him. Got into some trouble, you know, drugs, was involved. At the time, he was a serious drugs. In my opinion, he wasn't serious to me. But got in trouble with that kicked out, but somehow made it back to school, but no time to let me. So, I really haven't had much problem in school. Grades improved, because they were there in college for a little while. Then actually graduated, but by the time I was there, not a little bit, not what I could. After the college was Father passing. So he passed to God. I was living down the line. And I was on my own. I had my own apartment. So I was using crack. I was doing crack every day. So at that time, I was lost. Well, This still is a struggle for me, but I'm done with it as much as I can. But <coughs> like, because right now, I should be able to sleep inside. They help me get through it. They have struggles of their own. So, I have some verses for them. It's a question. Forgive me, and I do, I do likewise. Watch, and when I come up to the edge of the camp, and do as I do. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body and what you will put on. Is not like more the food or the body or in the clothing. Trust my testimony. Jesus is my Savior. Amen. Amen. Yeah, say that again. Keep saying it. That's okay. why you pray. Um, um, all right, all right. Thanks, Jeff. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, yeah. God, I can't remember what he said. How's this going to work? Of course. What um, are you doing? Oh, Jeff told me how to pray. I, 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 I've been having bad luck with my job, my wife, my kids. So I'm trying to pray here, so if you give me a minute. No, 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 that's not how you pray. You have, you have to get down on your knees, Corey. What? You have to get down on your knees. You have to show reverence to God. You have to, right. on, I'm, on. Kind of, I'm kind of old. Give me a minute. Right. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got to put your hands out. Hands yeah. out? Yeah, okay. Try to get them, you know, elbows up. Yeah, elbow up. Back straight, chin up. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get your hands up. Oh. Hands need to be about six inches from your chest. Not too far, down a little closer. Why six inches? That's that's the way God hears you. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the microphone, yeah. like uh, yeah. testing, yeah. testing. Now, now I'm trying to repeat after me. Okay. Oh Lord, oh Lord, thank you, Ed. 
Thank you, Is, for making me better. <laughs> for making me better. And then everyone else is. And everyone else is. <laughs> hey, man. Yes. Yes. You just have to keep talking like that, and, and you know, again, put your head out, and uh, back straight. Uh, and that's how God listens to you. Okay, uh, uh, thank, thank you, thank uh, you, uh, you, uh, God, is just, um, uh, heavenly father, oh, let me say, uh, uh suffering psychopathy, um, uh, I'm not even sure, uh, hell, uh, I'm, I'm trying to pray for it. Where are you going? I'm, I'm praying. <coughs> What? Uh, how do you do that? Okay. Uh, uh, I do what you want to do. Open your hands up. Okay. Open your hands up. Alright. Tell me what you want. I just have to tell the Lord what I want. Tell me what you want. Like what? What do you want? Um, well, I, I look at a new job. No, yeah, yeah, tell me that. Really? That's all I do? Well, we'll do that. House. Uh, I can get a job and a house. Oh, God, God, give me a, a, a house and, and how about some money? Can I get some money? Money? Like can, how much money can I get? What? Like one point five million? No. Um, how can we go to two then? Yeah. All right, God. Two million, two point five. I'm going to go. All right, all right. So I can get a house. Come on, God. I need this house. I need a car. A whole. In a pool? I decided to have I get a pool. This is great. But uh, no one's just gonna take. But that was alright. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. God, I need money. I need a car. Oh, if I get this new house, my wife is just gonna love it. Like in two days I can have all this stuff, my license this. Thank you, God. Oh, fella told me how to pray. He says it's the old funnel technique. You ask and God just gives it to you. That's not how you do it, brother. You gotta meditate before you talk to God. What? Let me show you. Yeah. You down here on the ground. I down on the ground again. Yeah. Oh, you guys are killing me. Cross the legs like this. Yeah, like a pipe. Come on. All right. Now you're like this. Okay. Fingers like that. It, yeah. Ooh. That just helps me connect to God better. Oh. All right. Like an antenna? Yeah. Oh. Take five deep breaths. Oh. Yeah, go. <laughs> Keep doing that. Take five more deep breaths. You like it, man. That's the whole thing. for uh, continuing on with this ministry, for gas, tools, as necessary. Um, so, without further ado, so we have small items like pens, adult teen challenge pens, um, we have coffee mugs, favorite color, cobalt blue. Um, for in the coffee mugs, we have coffee. Now the coffee uh, obviously, we don't provide beans, but we actually do uh, process the coffee at Teen Challenge and package it there. We have, 
As mentioned before, uh, condensed versions of the book, Crossing the Switchblade by Dave Wilkerson. We have crosses that are made at Teen Challenge, uh, also available in various uh, styles, as well as glow-in-the-dark armbands with the logo and the phone number. We have various t-shirts, uh, different colors, different logos, different sizes, all available. And in order to take these home with you, uh, bags, also with the Teen Challenge logo. Thank you very much. accepting no so I believe in stuff if I believe in something I believe in Jesus Amen. I believe in the ministry of Teen Challenge which you're with which you're witnessing today are you listening if I don't believe in something don't bother me but if I believe in something I can sell it so I was calling Pastor Jefferson and he finally got back with me and we booked him for chapel he was with us two different times for chapel did an awesome job so I appreciate him Thank you for Hanover Presbyterian Church here in Clinton, Pennsylvania. What a joy, a thrill, a blessing, and an honor to be with you today. So thank you, church, leaders, elders, board members, deacons. Trust me, I, I believe in what you're doing. And I'm honored. We're, we're here to partner with you. So thank you for having us. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of the team. Have a know we're a team here. Come on, Amen. I have to know that without him we are nothing. Without him we can do nothing. In him we live, breathe, and exist. So we're a team. We need one another. And glory to God, we need him. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to one of my friends. Uh, Brother Anthony Lapiana is with us. Uh, I just had lunch with him at the Olive Garden. How many believe in the Olive Garden? <laughs> Come on. So we just hang out, hung out on Friday. He's got a great testimony. I uh, actually went to Teen Challenge for a week, but he's doing well. That was back in the 80s, way before I was in the picture. So he, he wants to become a part of what we're doing, maybe serving in some capacity with Teen Challenge. He's a builder. In fact, the Pittsburgh Mills Mall, he helped build that mall. He's a builder. Man, I can't build anything. Are you kidding? I can break things. So, Brother Anthony, Tony, come on. Give him a hand this morning. Thank you. But I just want to share a few thoughts from the Word. I'm excited. Can you tell? Now, you have to understand, I'm an evangelist. I travel with the Assemblies of God as a preacher. I was just in Buffalo last weekend, New York. And then today I'm here. Next weekend, <laughs> next weekend I'm in New Jersey. Yeah, we got some booze with the Buffalo. <laughs> I'm actually from Baltimore. I grew up with the Colts. Johnny Unitas, anybody? <laughs> and then the Ravens came to the picture. I was already out of the house in the ministry. But come on, Lamar Jackson. The Ravens are dangerous. The Bills are dangerous. The Steelers need prayer. <laughs> Would you pray with me? Father, thank you that we are on your team. 
that you love us and you died for us. Father, touch every life, every heart. Minister to, minister to souls. May we leave different than we've come in. Changed, knowing you better. Setting the bar higher. Going deeper. Father, thank you for all that you've done for us. We give you all the glory. Minister to families. Touch hearts. Challenge somebody. Convict us of sin. God, whatever we need, do it. We're going to have the food, but may we experience the soul food now. May we put our plates out and say, God, give us all that we need. Give us all that you have for us. We thank you. We love you. We bless you. And everybody said, amen. I used to take Ritalin. <laughs> How many think I should take it still? Come on. <laughs> All right, there's a lot of songs that I've learned over the years. So we're going to do a song, Acapulco, and then we'll do a few things in the Word that will be done. Acapulco is acapella. Okay? Are you ready? Yes. yes. I got my mind made up. Watch it. My heart is fixed. Going to Jesus all the way. I got my mind made up. My heart is fixed. I'm going to Jesus. It's real simple. Come on. I got my mind made up. My heart is fixed. I'm going to Jesus all the way. I got my mind made up. My heart is fixed. I'm going to Jesus. Come on, you sing. I got my mind made up. from God. They need counseling. They need encouragement. Their marriage is falling apart. Their kids aren't talking to them. They owe people money. They're ducking. They're hiding. They're lying. If you know someone like that, pray 
for them. Talk with us later. We'll pray with you for them. We'll step through some stuff. Give us a jingle. We'll connect with you. We'll get them in somehow, some way. Watch this. Teen challenge is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. And these guys are learning about Jesus. How many are thankful that Jesus loves you? Come on. So go for it. I wanted to mention there are a number of pastors. I mean, I know a lot of people over the years being in ministry, 30 years traveling alone. I worked at Teen Challenge back in the 80s in Syracuse, New York. Teen Challenge is worldwide. There are Teen Challenges all over the country. So I worked eight years in Syracuse, New York. But there are two books. These are two pastors that are good friends of mine. They've written books. I said, give me the books. I'll try to get them out there and sell them. So this one is 15. This one is 10. Has nothing to do with me or Teen Challenge. This is a book entitled, You Have Spiritual Gifts. It's Time You Use Them. Vince Arnold, Pastors, a church in Russellton, PA. It's a part of Allison Parks Churches. They've got a bunch of church plants all over Pittsburgh and the country. But this book is a great read. Have a note, God has given you gifts. Amen. So you got to use them. There it is. 15 bucks. Help us out if you can or help them out. And then uh, uh, both of these guys have been with us for chapel. And so uh, this is Vince Arnone. This is John Holt. Both guys live in the area of Pittsburgh, if you will. And so this book is about uh, him climbing a mountain. Uh, Kilimanjaro? Yeah, he climbed it. I'm not sure if he made it to the top. I won't tell you if he did or not. I can't really remember. I think he did. I'm not sure. I mean, <laughs> that sounds weird, but it's true. I, my memory's gone. Uh, but he talks about going up the mountain and how, how he needed to do very... Very simply, one thing. Follow the guide. The guide said, put your hand here. He put his hand here. Put your foot here. Put your hand. Put your foot. Put your hand. Put your foot. Put your hand. Put your foot. And he talks about the Christian life is exactly that. Following what Jesus tells us to do. It's, it's powerful. It's all about sanctification. How many know it's one thing to get saved? Amen. You say that prayer, good stuff. That sanctification is the rest of your life. Learning how to walk with him, dying to yourself, following him. He goes, you go. He says, you say. You know, so this is the Christian. So right here, nine, uh, 10 bucks. So help, help them out. Uh, there it is, okay? I want to talk about uh, the Word of God. I mean, I mean, I, my sermon is on the Bible. Well, that, that sounds weird. You'll understand. <laughs> Just give me a minute to drink. Psalms, and I'm so excited about this, I'm always excited, but I just, I don't know, just excited about it. But Psalms 119, verse 105, and as soon as I start, you'll know it. Psalms 119, and we're just going to share a few thoughts and we're going to be standing. Psalms 119, verse 105, says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Come on, how many know this one? Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto your path. Back in the 80s, Amy Grant sang it well. I had a crush on Amy Grant. Anybody else? <laughs> Debbie Boone, that was my second choice. Debbie Boone, you light up my light. <laughs> but it says, your word, your word is a lamp unto my feet. And I light into my path. Listen, it's God's word that shows us where we're standing. It's God's word that shows us where we're going. Are you with me? Yes. Thy word, the Bible, remember that book? Is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Are you with me? Yesterday I attended a funeral. I wasn't in the funeral, but I played the drums for the funeral. And I went to the funeral just because I knew the person. Nan Wegraff. Nan Wegraff. That's her name. Or was her name? Grew up in Cape Cod. Nan Wegraff. 93 almost. I've got it right here. She was born, hold on, uh, in 1929. In November 23rd. November 23rd, 1929. Passed away November 8th. 2022. She was two weeks shy of 93. Can you imagine? 
That's crazy cool. I'm 57 and I'm falling apart. I'm 57 and why don't you just go, brother? 93? Not me, man. I don't think so. But Nan Wegram, she had not she has nine kids. Nine kids. And they're all still living. How cool is that? Married 68 years. Some people don't even live that long. But they showed a video of her at her own funeral speaking. How cool is that to speak at her own funeral? <laughs> and she talked about how she lived a long life. She had a family. She adored her husband, Jack, who died a few years before her, a number of three, four years ago now. And so, you know, almost 93, nine kids, grew up going to the ocean. She loved salt water. She mentioned some of the, but she also talked about God's word is what it works. That was her life. She believed in the Bible. She followed the Lord to the best of her ability. Are you listening this morning? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let me say a couple things and we're done. I don't read my Bible for you. I read my Bible for me. Stop trying to impress people. Stop trying to be motivated to do it for the wrong reason. I don't read my Bible for you. I've got to read my Bible for me. Are you with me? Yes. And we've got to look at the whole book. How many know that the Bible is not like a salad bar where you pick and choose what you want? It's all or none. The Bible still stands. The Bible is the truth. Somebody once said this, when your Bible's messed up, chances are your life isn't. Because you're using it, you're reading it, you're absorbing it, you're looking into it. Can you say amen? amen. I read this recently. Are you on Facebook more than your face is in the book? God help us. You know, there's a good crowd here. I don't know how many you normally get, but I've been in ministry long enough to know the chicken have something to do with it. <laughs> The truth will set you free. Look, our church, we have a potluck. We have people I've never seen before. <laughs> we have families coming in. What in the world? <laughs> I'm all about chicken. And how many know we need to be all about the truth? We need to be all about the Bible, all about the Word of God. His Word. His Word. Not my Word. Not your Word. Not His Word. His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I read this of a family. And then we're going through some difficult times, which every family, including my own, goes through challenges. Are you with me? And so they invited the pastor to come over and talk with them all. And one of the kids didn't know he was coming. And then he said to the family, he said, is the pastor coming over? And the, the parents said, yeah, how did you know? And he said, uh, well, because somebody pulled the Bible out and put it on the golf game. <laughs> As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The Ten Commandments. My kids have been talking with me lately. I've got three teenagers, so I have my own teen challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but if the world followed just the Ten Commandments, it'd be a different place. I mean, we gotta, we got to get back to His Word. Can you say amen? amen? It's not the Ten Suggestions, it's the Ten Commandments. The Bible is our roadmap. The Bible is our instruction manual. The Bible is our compass. The Bible is what it is. It's our food. It's, 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 it, it, it's all that we need and should use to make it, but it's everything. Even with Teen Challenge, we teach the guys when they give their testimony, give a life verse. Did you catch that? Now, life verse. You should all have a life verse. There should be a scripture that you hold dear to your heart and you're motivated to live it out. Now, yes, the whole Bible we're to live out. You already know that I said that. But take those scriptures and run with them. You know, Christmas is coming up and the chaos is beginning. I can't believe it. It's crazy. It's over the top. That's another story. But I am not very good at reading directions. And normally when things come in that I got to put together for my kids at Christmas, I do not 
bother to read the directions because I think I can do it without them. <laughs> oh, how hard can this be? And what I find myself doing every Christmas or whenever the kids get something that involves assembling, I don't bother with the directions. I put it together and then I'm like, stink. This is not right. <laughs> There's a couple pieces on the ground that probably should be. Oh, I didn't think I needed them, but now it's done. It's all, look, it's all jacked up. Anybody ever jack stuff up? <laughs> Isn't that the truth with the Word of God? We've got to slow down. Slow down. Don't mess it up. Don't jack it up. Don't be too quick to think you. There's directions for a reason. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Come on. Same is true with the Bible. This is a book that is life to us. This is a book that works. Can you say amen? amen. It's where it leads us, helps us, guides us. It instructs us. It convicts us. His word tells us the truth, and his word is always right. Teen Challenge is not a ministry based on willpower. This is the ministry where they're reading about God through his love letter to them, the Bible, and they're learning what Jesus did for them so that they don't have to live in bondage any longer. But they can be set free. They can walk in freedom. That's what it's all about. And as a Christian, we must be people that are in his word. Our world's a mess, ladies and gentlemen. There are no absolutes anymore. So they say everything's gray, whatever you think. Guess what? That's not the case. I want to introduce you to the book that will always be around. God's word is still the truth. It's our standard. It's what we must go by. David said, I take your word and I hide it in my computer. Is that what he said? <laughs> no, I take your word and I hide it where? In my heart. See, the human heart's the problem. Our world, look, it's not a political issue. I don't even like to talk about all the drama and all the immorality and all the craziness. Because guess what? The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Do you know the world's always been a mess? We just have CNN. We just have Fox News. We just have uh, social media and TV that doesn't go off. And we have 400 channels and I still can't find out how to turn the TV on. I have to go to college to learn how to run these clickers. But <laughs> now, there's nothing new. The Bible works. Can you say amen? amen. Jesus said it is written. When Jesus was tempted, he said, it is written. And guess what? You don't know it's written unless you know it's in there. Hebrews 4.12 God's word is living and active, sharp, penetrates, divides soul and spirit, joint and marrow, looks at the intents of the heart. The Bible is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my bed. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Would you stand? In a moment, the pastor is going to come and close us out. We're going to be eating and having a great time of fellowship, but I don't know what this message means to you. I don't know where you're at with God, but I will say this for the record. Be in the Bible, study the Word to show yourself a proof, someone that can rightly divide it. When you look at the world and all the mess that it's in, I'm not bothered by it, you know why? This is part of the plan if you read the book. It's going to get worse before it gets better. We live in a world like Sodom and Gomorrah. People just don't care. But there's a Bible. There's a standard. There's the truth. If it doesn't show up in there, don't do it. If it says go, go. If it says stop, stop. Don't even think about it. Well, just right there. It's, it's got to line up. There is a standard. There are morals. There are absolutes in the Bible. Everywhere else, no. No. We're, we're, we're changing everything. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Hanover Presbyterian Church, for Pastor Jefferson Ellis. I thank you that your word, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our belly. Father, if we're not living right, 
convict us today. If we're doing some things we shouldn't be doing. God, may your Holy Spirit speak to us to stop. I pray that we would get back into the Word, back into meditation, back into church attendance, back into serving and giving and loving and giving back. We would get back into being on your team, following you. God, we want to be game changers. We want to be history makers. We don't just want to talk about it. We want to do it. We don't just want to say amen. We want our lives to be an amen to you. We want you to say, well done. That good and faithful servant. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the kids ministry. For the shoe boxes going out in Jesus name. Father thank you for today. We give you praise. Would you say that with me? Come on let's give the Lord a hand. God bless you all. Maybe see you. You can take those seatbelts off now. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, just appreciate so much your passion and the, the truth that you bring us to remind us that, that we have one one guidebook. Amen. One guidebook to know the one God. So thank you. We respond to God's word uh, by praying together. Um, if you would, this week, as you are thinking about it, um, pray and thank God again for all of our, our veterans. Uh, also, if you could just pray for uh, Sharon's brother, uh, Keith, going through some some issues. We pray uh, Greg. Is, is Greg's here, but spent some time in the hospital uh, this week, so we pray that, that you continue to, to heal. Um, pray for uh, Lillian and, and Vicki, they lost their uh, cousin this week. I'm sorry to hear that. She, she passed away. Pray for Brownie Statler. Many of you know him, the hip button guy. Uh, his, his mother passed away, so pray for that, that family this week. Um, Charlene's family member passed away, and pray for, for their family. Um, pray for uh, Jim, Jim McKenzie. She, he's going to be having a hip, hip replacement this, this week. Um, so among other things, if you could pray for all those things, I will leave a time during the prayer where if you have uh, needs that you'd like to bring directly to the Lord, you, you may do that out loud. So let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just can't thank you enough for, for who you are and what you've done. And, and, and Lord, for the blessing it is to have these men with us today. That you are working in their lives. I've seen their facility. I've seen them reading your word, reading the, the textbooks, Lord, to grow closer to you. Thank you so much for that scripture that tells us that, uh, that you are light. You are the lamp. You are the light. Lord, thank you that, that when we know you, when, when we have that relationship with you, when we are one with you because of nothing we've done, but the, because of the blood of Jesus, that we're called your sons, we're called your daughters, and you tell us that we can then come to you with the things that are in our heart. You tell us, cast your burdens onto you, Lord Jesus. And so we do, that list of names I just mentioned out loud, and those things that are on our hearts, we lift to you. And if there's anything else here, Lord, on our hearts that we'd like to mention out loud, I give them, I give you this time now for, for those in the congregation to lift up any prayers uh, they have they'd like to lift up to you. Lord, sometimes we uh, sometimes we keep them to ourselves. So, Lord, be with any kind of unspoken request we have this morning. Thank you again for the shoe boxes. Thank you for the opportunity to sing praise to you. 
how great is the Lord our God. Thank you for Teen Challenge, Lord. Thank you for the food that we will have together uh, with them after this service. Thank you for those that serve our country, Lord, in the past and ones that are currently going. Thank you for the ministry of the Kids Club that we are involved with at Mill Creek. Thank you for our preschool. Lord, thank you for the congregational meeting and for our elders and our, our deacons. What a blessing it is to, to be striving together for the glory of God. Now would you hear us, Lord, as we come together, pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We respond to God's word uh, by giving of, of our time, of the abilities that he has given us, and of the resources he has given us in the first place. So I invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offerings given in faith. <laughs> Pennsylvania and throughout your world about Jesus Christ, the one who saves us and the one who makes us right with you. Thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We invite you real quick to look at the uh, handover happenings on the back of your bulletin there. Again, thank you so much to all those who have served our country. In, in many different ways. And the Team Challenge guys, thank you so much for coming today and sharing with me, sharing with us the testimony, the skit, um, and look forward to getting to know you guys when we have uh, lunch later this afternoon. Bible study at uh, Tuesday. Uh, Kids Club, those of you that are helping, I think you know who you are. Uh, at Wednesday at 2.30, we are on this Wednesday, then we're off the following Wednesday. Uh, for Thanksgiving. Again, if you can have the, the boxes here by Friday, if you have a last minute one, bring it in. That's not a, a problem at all. If you would like to or feel led to give toward the uh, postage for that, 
uh, just put a check or something in, mark it in the uh, collection, and, and Kim will, will send that in to uh, Samaritan's Purse as well. Believe it or not, next week is the uh, Hanging of the Greens. Uh, if you guys were another week later, this place would look unbelievable. Uh, for Christmas, it's decorated in an awesome way. We'll be decorating after the worship service, so if you can stick around, I believe we're having soup, is that right? We have some soup to eat next week. And then that evening is the community Thanksgiving service. Pastor O is going to be uh, here, Lord willing, to be part of that with us. I've invited Mill Creek to join us uh, for that, and the, what we ask is that you bring a dessert to share. Uh, particularly pumpkin pie. No, we're going to bring a dessert to share uh, for when that service is over. That's at 7 o'clock next Sunday night. And then we are still looking for folks for the live nativity. Uh, that is on December 17th at the Hookstown Fairgrounds. The sign up is out on the bulletin board. We are the 730, we're the last time slot of the night, 730 to 8.15 that night. And if you'd like to sing carols that night, uh, talk to me and, and make sure I know that. Any, any other announcements I'm forgetting? I saw on the back table um, December 4th over at Mount Pleasant. They're having a carol. December, do you know the time on that? I don't. It's on that back table. Right. Yeah. yeah, there is a Christmas carol sing December 4th at up the road at Mount Pleasant. And there's a flyer back there. What time is it say, Sharon? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. at Mount Pleasant. All right. I probably forgot something, but uh, I'll think of it later. Our closing hymn, we, we, you've heard today, and I just love the testimonies that were given about Jesus, and that this is about Jesus. Um, so uh, he gives us grace. He gives us grace that is greater than our sin. Let's stand and sing this great old hymn. challenge for being here today. I pray that you all, as we eat, will get to know them, talk to them a little bit. If you'd like to support their ministry, they didn't ask us for anything. They didn't you know, charge us anything. They came here to partner with us. So if you want to buy a pen or something to help support their ministry, I know 
that they would appreciate that that's available out there. We'll we'll let our uh, the benediction act as our prayer if we're ready to eat. I think we're we're ready to eat. So once you uh, once you head out of here, we can begin to eat and enjoy time together. Thank you again for being here. You heard it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. May we follow the book. May we follow the word of the Lord God. And what a blessing it is to do that. Now receive the message. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.